5.32 now. Um, I think we uh, get started. Um, good afternoon. I'm Philip Wu uh, with the Department of City Planning, and I will be moderating this uh, development activities meeting on behalf of the Oakland Business Improvement Districts and the Oakland Planning and Development Corporation. Uh, we have one project that will be uh, presented during this meeting. Uh, it's for the demolition and later reconstruction of the facade uh, of the Croatian Fraternal Union Building, located at 3441 Forbes Avenue, a building that is owned by the University of Pittsburgh. Uh, before we get into uh, the presentation, uh, I just want to go over a few housekeeping items related to participating in this Zoom meeting. First, if uh, anyone has any technical issues or needs any assistance, please use the chat feature to ask for help. If folks have questions for the presenters tonight, please use the Q&A tool to type out your question or comment. Or if you would like to ask your question uh, out loud, now you can tap the raise hand button. Uh, if you're calling in by phone, press star nine to raise your hand and I will announce the last four digits of your phone number uh, when we're ready to unmute you. For our presenters tonight, we ask that you try your best to describe what's on each slide that you're presenting to assist folks who may be on audio only or who aren't in front of a computer. And lastly, we are recording this meeting for OPDC and OBIT to post online later if desired. And with that, I'm going to hand it off to Derek Dauphin, City's Neighborhood Planner for the Oakland Neighborhood, who will briefly discuss the Registered Community Organization Program and uh, go over next steps for the applicants after this meeting. All right, thank you, Phil. Hi, everyone, my name is Derek Dauphin. I'm the Neighborhood Planner for Oakland. Uh, I'm gonna walk you through just a few, uh, a little bit of background about these meetings. Um, for those who are new to these kinds of meetings, um, the development activities meetings are required by the Registered Community Organization Ordinance. It's a program that we administered and the basics are that community organizations that meet certain requirements um, around transparency and process um, and representation can um, seek certification by the city. Um, and once they receive that, there are a couple benefits that they receive. One of them is that they um, can host development meetings that are a part of the development review process. Um, so these development activity meetings, this is, is the first one of, uh, of these two RCOs. So uh, there are now two RCOs in at least part of Oakland, and we'll cover that in a second. Um, but the intent of this meeting really is for, for the attendees to get a chance to hear directly from the applicant um, about the project at a stage before it's permitted. Um, so next slide, please. Um, my, you know, other than this sort of little brief uh, talking piece at the beginning of this, most of my job is actually to write down what is said. So I keep a, a report of, um, of what's presented and and then also what questions are asked and what answers are given. Um, so the idea is that I am providing a neutral telling um, to the board or commission that they're seeking approval from so that they can understand what happened to this meeting. So my um, development activities meeting report goes to the board or commission along with the applications, the applicant's project. Um, and so one of the things we always like to highlight is that if you feel strongly about this project, it, it really is incumbent upon you to do the, to testify, you know, in favor or against or however you see fit about the project. I, I will not be representing any sort of general perception of how the community feels about a project. I'm just literally telling a neutral telling of, of what happens um, at this meeting. So I won't draw any conclusions as a part of my report. Next slide, please. Um, there's a couple uh, additional notes here. One is that Oakland is in the middle of an active neighborhood planning process, um, including many of the, the parties that are on the call, I can see. Um, and one of the things that came out of that planning process already is that the project steering committee approved a short list of goals for development projects um, on a number of the major corridors, including this corridor, the Fifth and Forbes corridor. Um, I put a link in here to where you can learn a little bit more about the development goals. They're called interim development goals. The intent is that they would last until the plan is formally adopted uh, and any changes to the zoning code are approved. Um, so that's relevant to the development team. And also I would recommend 
um, interested attendees to review that. Uh, it was certainly the intent when creating it was that that it could be a, a useful tool both for the community in terms of its advocacy, but also um, for the city and other partners to review and to understand what's desired in this corridor. Um, one of the other things that's unique about this corridor now is that there are two uh, RCOs. Um, Oakland Planning and Development Corporation had been an RCO before, but recently Oakland's Business Improvement District was uh, became a registered community organization. Um, this is not the first time that there have been two RCOs in one area, but it is the first time in, in Oakland proper. Um, in this case, what happens is what Phil just started out with, is that the, the city planning then hosts the meeting in partnership with the two RCOs um, and provides the technical support for the meeting. Um, one of the things then that we like to do is to make sure that the RCOs get their chance to sort of speak about their involvement with the, the applicant or any other comments they wish to make. So without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to them. And I, Phil, if you put the next slide, it'll tell me which one I'm handing it off to. Okay, so first I'm going to hand it over to Georgia from the Open Business Improvement District. Thank you, Derek. Good evening, everyone. I'm Georgia Petropoulos. I'm the executive director of the Oakland Business Improvement District. It's great to be with you all tonight. Um, the slide that we have up here, uh, there are only two slides, so I will read from this first one. It is, we were asked to put a little description about our organization. And so um, the OBID, which is a business improvement district, there are two in the city of Pittsburgh. There's one managed by our organization in central Oakland. And the second one is in downtown Pittsburgh managed by our partner, the Pittsburgh Downtown Partnership. Um, we are focused in the Central Oakland Corridor. This project, by the way, is located within the Business Improvement District um, with um, support from property and business owners, as well as our institutional partners um, and other funding sources. We provide services to uh, help the Business District maintain competitiveness, anywhere from uh, placemaking and activation, beautification, business and economic development. Uh, we just, for example, just um, unveiled a new uh, pop-up retail shop along Forbes Avenue to marketing and events um, and community organizing. Uh, recently, we've also begun to work with the South Craig Street merchants as well. Very excited about that. Um, our board of directors um, last late last year actually uh, went through a 15 month process and completed a organizational strategic plan. So what you have here on the slide is actually our vision mission and our value statement. Um, our vision is to set the standard for growth and innovation. The mission of the organization is to ensure Oakland's place as Pennsylvania's global center. And we're very proud of our new value statement to reframe the experience of commercial, retail, office, and residential environments while dismantling oppression, embracing diversity, promoting diverse business, and creating spaces for social, racial, and economic justice. We can move to the next slides. So um, this, uh, this month, the, um, uh, myself, I met actually with a representative from the University of Pittsburgh to review and discuss the proposed project. Um, that was um, uh, Beth McGrew, who was on the call today. Uh, she also provided uh, us some brief slides and a little more information about the project, which I shared uh, with our board of directors as well. Um, and so some of the feedback that we received from some of our board members for the organization as well as some of the adjacency owners. Uh, folks are excited at um, the, um, first of all, excited about the design of the project. We do support the project. We do support what's being proposed right now. Uh, we especially um, applaud that they are reusing, have found a way to uh, repurpose the facade. We do understand that uh, that was an issue that was um, brought to the attention of the university, uh, maybe as far back as at least a year ago. Uh, so it's very good to see that they are repurposing the facade. It's a historical piece. It's, it's great for the district, great for the community. We support that. Um, we also support the fact that they are committed to the ground floor retail. As you know, um, our central open corridor is definitely seeing new development, new uh, renovations. It's wonderful to see what's happening. We want to make sure, particularly in this block of Forbes Avenue that has not seen much foot traffic in the last few decades, really, um, that we continue to have spaces and uses that encourage foot traffic, that encourage attractions. So things from art installations, cafe tables and chairs, small community gatherings and meetings, et cetera. Um, we um, um, encourage the university to continue to support such uses in this courtyard that they've created behind the, the repurposed facade. Um, we would like to continue to see more information and more detail from the university on the project. 
in particular, um, the design and the facade fenestration and the transparency. That's, that's definitely a request that came my way from some of my stakeholders. Um, and so again, uh, as, we, as from what we're seeing today and what we've heard, um, the OBIT organization is in support of this project and we look forward to hearing more tonight. Mm. Thank you. All right, uh, thank you, Georgia. And uh, we have Wanda here from uh, OPDC um, to speak um, about uh, their organization. Hi, I'm Wanda Wilson, the Executive Director of Oakland Planning and Development Corporation. Our mission is to build a better Oakland and help neighbors thrive. Uh, we're a uh, comprehensive community development organization serving all four Oakland neighborhoods uh, with the services that are listed here. Uh, next slide, please. Our uh, engagement with the project to date is that we help, we hosted a presentation from the university um, May 25th at our Oakland-wide community meeting. Preservation Pittsburgh was also there to describe their involvement um, regarding the historic nomination for the building. We have a page on our website uh, where you can find all information as we've been um, following this project um, for a couple years now and have the information there on the design and development review section of our website if you'd like to see more information. All right, uh, thank you, Wanda. Um, I think uh, we can get started uh, on the presentation from the PIT team. Uh, Jamie, um, would you like to share your screen for, for someone else from the team? I believe our presenters this evening are going to be Owen Cooks and Beth McGrew from University of Pittsburgh. Okay. Okay. All right. So can everyone see? I can see it. Okay. Um, Beth or Owen, would you like to uh, present? Yes. Uh, this is Mary Beth McGrew. I'm the Associate Vice Chancellor of Planning Design and Real Estate for the University of Pittsburgh. Can you hear me all right? Yeah, I can hear you. All right. Uh, so tonight, uh, we would like to present um, the Croatian Fraternal Union, the Salvage and Demolition. Next slide. So I'd like to just go through the agenda first. What you're seeing is the existing condition of the building. Uh, I'd like to go over the, briefly the property information, the building background, um, the present state and the property use, our present preservation agreement, the salvage and reuse plan, the requirements for approval, the potential future use and our next steps. Next slide. Uh, so what you're looking at now is a site plan and the site plan shows uh, the site that we own right next to it. Um, the Croatian Fraternal Order is 3441 Forbes Avenue. It's owned Oakland Public Realm C um, and it was most recently the Allegheny County Health Clinic purchased by the university in 2018. Adjacent to the building uh, is the bridge on one side to the uh, south and on the east an empty lot owned by the university formerly 3447 Forbes and it is bounded by Forbes Avenue uh, to the south and Euler Way uh, the alley behind it uh, slightly to the northwest. 3447 is an empty lot and following the partial collapse and subsequent demolition of the building in 2018 uh, occurred, a portion of the parapet wall fell on the roof of 3441 unexpectedly, uh, separated and fell onto the roof of 3447. Um, next slide. So what you're looking at now uh, is an old cover for the Croatian Fraternal Union of America. And the building background is, it was uh, completed in 1929 for the Croatian Fraternal Union of America. The CFU building is a three-story flat-roofed structure of brick, steel, and concrete construction. 
It was designed by Luxembourg-born Pittsburgh architect Pierre Lich, uh, who lived from 1872 to 1954, and the building is a Flemish Gothic revival style, or it was in its original glory. I guess it still is what's there. Next slide, please. So the present state of the property, um, it's not a good one, but we have a failing superstructure. The parapet is partially collapsed and destroyed. The roof is collapsing on the uppermost, in on the uppermost floor, and the two chimneys are concrete and in need of removal uh, before collapse. The interior conditions are in extremely poor shape. Um, most of the, most all of the finishes are destroyed. The interior partitioning is unsalvageable and water has penetrated most of the rooms over the years. The building has been vacant for a long time. The front facade status, uh, we do believe and we've had uh, experts look at this, that the terracotta is salvageable it will require new steel framing to be reused as originally laid, and some of the original elements are gone. Um, so our post-demolition uh, of the building and the interim use is to keep the existing blue fence across both the um, site that's on there now and the Croatian Fraternal Order. We'd like to place set the fence maybe five feet back off of the sidewalk because it isn't very appealing to always walk back a, by a fence and maybe put some benches there, keep the back lot, lot secured by the fencing so that you can't get into it or get hurt uh, from the alley and no use of the vacant lot is planned prior to the redevelopment of the site. Next slide. So, um, on May 5th, 2021, the university and uh, Dr. Anthony Bevan and the nominators uh, for the historic structures came to a preservation agreement. Uh, the parties acknowledged that the, that the building is in serious disrepair, uh, but the parties further acknowledged on both sides that there was something here to be salvaged and some discussion of the history of the site was important to the city of Pittsburgh and in particular the Oakland community. So the university agrees to preserve the remaining terracotta pieces of the facade for future assembly. We want to catalog them and move them off site in protected climate controlled storage. After the site is improved and occupied and the recovered facade is reconstructed, the university then agrees to nominate the recovered facade uh, for historic, individual historic designation exclusive of the new structure. Next slide. So what you're looking at is a salvage plan. This is how it's done. Each piece of the building is labeled and cataloged and put on pallets where we'll take it to a site and uh, to preserve it. We don't wanna leave them outside. We're not sure that the terracotta can withstand that in loose pieces. So each piece will be cataloged and taken to a site where it will be protected um, as the building then will be demolished and we will begin a development plan that also will have to come back to you for review. Next slide. Um, what you're looking at on the right of the slide is the tube steel that will be put in there to hold the, the uh, restored facade when it's put back in place. Um, so we will have a development activities meeting with the registered community organizations. So tonight's meeting is for demolition and the salvage plan review. And then we'll have a future meeting for the new development. Uh, we anticipate going the last July hearing to the planning commission for demolition and salvage plan approval. And then we'll have a group future building and hearing for new development plan approval. The Historic Review Commission um, post-project completion, uh, that will be where we go for the nomination of the restored facade. Next slide. Uh, this is our conceptual sketch uh, showing the facade put back uh, next to it, the adjacent building would be a larger building. We think the facade behind the 
um, the building behind the restored facade needs to be respectful of the height of the existing facade and not be overly dominant. The, but the building next, the site next to it can have a building that connects to that and, and a little larger. Uh, what you're looking on the lower slide where you see my arrow is the idea that this facade would be separated a bit from the new building so there could be a little breathing room between the old and the new and uh, a bit of an open air structure. And what you're seeing on the right hand side of the slide is the in plan where you see the seven story building and then the three story building and the open air space and then up above the two of them in perspective. Um, I see a, a note here. Is anyone reading the chat? I think at the I can stop now if you like, Phil, or we can go through all of the slides. I think this is the last one anyway to answer the questions. Um, yeah, I, I think we can just go through the last slide and then uh, we'll get the questions. Uh, so we hope to secure planning commission approval in July of 2021. Uh, we hope to receive uh, approval for the lane and restriction, clo restriction and closure and demolition would be planned to begin immediately following anticipated public approvals, of course, subject to building condition not degrading any further. Uh, we, we will retain an architect to begin programming and looking at our potential uses and occupancy. Uh, many permitted uses in OPRC uh, likely will be some kind of office with the ground floor uh, transparency retained uh, for retail or a public facing function. Um, the maximum height of 85 feet without special exception will be accepted and the current image on the right shows approximately 80 feet for the taller structure. Uh, and then we'll be moving as we get through our planning, we'll be moving that through the inter university leadership to approve um, the design and the financing and the occupants for the building. And so now I'd like to open it up for questions or comments. Uh, it looks like we have um, one question um, to enhance pedestrian safety and movement walking along the fenced in lot, particularly at night, would lighting be added? Um, I don't know what power is available to that site, but there there is a street light there, so I was, it's certainly something we can look at. Uh, uh, sorry, go ahead. No, the special exception I see, are you saying there was a special exception available for height? We're not asking for a special exception. The, the acceptable height is 85 feet according to the zoning. But we, we think we would be lower than that in the historic, uh, the site where the historic facade is going to be. We also have a question um, from Brian, uh, why wasn't a uh, facadectomy, um, in quotes, considered where they maintain the facade in place, but the structure behind is upgraded? You mean, why didn't we leave the facade in place and not take it down? Uh, I, I, and build behind it? Yeah, that, that's, what the, that's what the question sounds like. Yep, Brian um, says yes. After talking to our facade experts, they felt that when they, uh, there is a basement level, but they felt it was unsafe and would likely destroy the facade to try and prop it up in place and then take down the building behind it. That is something that we discussed and had people look at it when we were talking with Preservation Pittsburgh. And the recommendation was that we would have greater success taking it down, storing it, demolishing the building, and then coming back and putting up the tube steel and anchoring the restored facade to the tube steel. So that was the recommendation of the facade experts. All right. Um, do folks uh, have any additional questions? Uh, any questions from uh, OBID or OPDC?
this is Georgia and we have no additional questions. None from you, Wanda? No. Um, Mark just uh, has a comment here. The link OPDC had on last slide appeared to have a typo. I think that was the bit.ly link. It, it was in a typo actually, so it works fine. Uh, we have a question. Uh, what is the demolition schedule? Uh, well, we don't have a demolition schedule, but assuming we would get in the planning commission in July, we would like, we then have to apply for uh, the permit for demolition. So we'd like to do it this summer. But we don't have a specific date because we have to wait for our approvals. And, um, has there been any uh, consideration of restoring the grade ornamentation that was there previously? Um, that's a question from Brian. Well, we talked about that a lot, but it's been gone for so long, it, it would seem disingenuous to rebuild it as it once was. Uh, it's been gone quite a while. So um, our goal was following um, the recommendations of historic preservation was really to, to look at uh, what is there and put enough, put as much of it back as we can to pique your curiosity and then maybe uh, work with Preservation Pittsburgh on writing about the history of the Fraternal Order and putting that inside that open air space so that uh, people can read about the significance of that rather than restoring something that wouldn't be real or genuine. All right. Um, are there any uh, other questions for the project team? Seeing none, uh, we'd like to thank everyone for joining us tonight and for uh, Mary Beth um, for her presentation. Uh, if you have any uh, additional comments about the project, you can send them to uh, the Planning Commission at Planning Commission at PittsburghPA.gov. Um, Mark has a question here. Uh, when will this recording be available? Um, well, uh, I'll, I'll have the recording by tonight, and I, I'll forward it to uh, to both Georgia and Wanda. Um, so um, they will have they will have uh, copies of that uh, by by tomorrow. All right, um, uh, there are no other questions. Uh, thanks everyone for um, your attendance and we hope uh, everyone has a great evening. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, have a great evening everyone. Thank thanks. You. Good night, thanks Bill.